Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV Whiskey One. Good vibrations. I have another story to tell you. We, you've asked for stories of my early ham radio days. This dates from probably 1971. In any case, at, during that summer, I had a, a long-term CW relationship with a ham named George from New Zealand. Uh, he used the ZM2 prefix, Zulu Mike 2. I guess there was some kind of memorial year uh, in New Zealand that year for ham radio. Anyway, whatever. He introduced me to high speed CW and got me interested in that kind of ham radio. <laughs> well, let's just say perhaps useless from a practical standpoint, uh, but uh, fun and uh, a, a reprieve from the mundane everyday life of trying to become an Olympic swimmer at which I failed miserably. So I found something else, high-speed CW. I built my own little keyer, powered by a couple of flashlight cells, as I recall, or maybe one of those little nine-volt batteries. A little keyer, um, even the paddle was uh, fabricated out of a piece of stiff wire, two floor tiles for the paddle itself, and a couple of regular old bolts for contacts and well, well it worked and it allowed me to send about 20 words a minute maybe 25 and I put it underneath I believe a Halicrafters FPM uh, Foxtrot Papa Mike 300 FPM 300 transceiver uh, for a mobile operation in an old Oldsmobile Cutlass 1967 Olds Cutlass that my dad owned, but more or less lent it to me on a permanent basis, so he bore all the responsibility and I bore all the fun. And that, that thing would go pretty fast. Uh, I used to crank that thing up to well over 90 or 100 mile an hour. Um, I guess the statute of limitations has run out and I won't tell you where I did it, but I will tell you that I did mobile CW operation on Highway 14, U.S. Highway 14, west of Rochester, Minnesota, a two-lane road back then. And uh, one evening after a QSO with George at high speed, which I did almost nightly on 20 meters that summer, um, I said, uh, how would you like to listen to me from my... Uh, Mobile CW station, and he said, fine, I'll be here. And my dad, uh, I believe, uh, I believe he drove and I operated to minimize the hazard uh, inherent in mobile operation and paying attention to anything but the road at night, especially on a two lane highway uh, at night. Uh, but I operated the, the radio. Dad did not know any CW, but George did, and I did, and we had a nice QSO driving on that Highway 14 from Rochester out to, oh, maybe Wasika. Wasika, Minnesota, where they make, where they made and maybe still do make E.F. Johnson radios. That's where I got the E.F. Johnson Viking Adventurer transmitter, the E.F. Johnson Matchbox Transmatch, and the E.F. Johnson Transmit Receive TR switch later for my Drake radios. Uh, no, I had the Drake radios that summer, but they wouldn't work mobile. The uh, Frank Papa Mary 300 did, and that's the only radio I can think of that I would have used uh, mobile in that automobile uh, because uh, I, I, I don't I, I had a national 200 transceiver earlier than that but I don't believe I ever tried to use that mobile but the Frank 
Not Frank. Why do we keep insisting on Frank, the old uh, phonetic? Foxtrot, Papa Mary 300 radio did, and so we had a contact with George that way. I even wanted to hear what his voice sounded like, so one night my friend Bob and I uh, had a single sideband contact so I could hear what, he, what his voice was like. And I remember him talking about high-speed CW and how he knew some hams who could do upwards of 75 words a minute, even near 80 words a minute. He himself said, I can do 55 or 60 for you any time. But by then I was a sluggish old mule who could only trudge along at about 45 words a minute. And it rarely got to be more than that with a paddle um, type of keyer. But I had great fun that summer, as I recall. That was the summer of the great windstorm of June 24th, 1971, which I have described in another video, I believe entitled The Indestructible Vertical. But anyway, just another story for you. Uh, brings back more old memories for me, I'm, uh, but uh, as for you, I'm sure you have your stories too. Uh, so, I don't know, I'll leave comments open because that's what you want. And as long as you don't call me an idiot, you can call me a moron, I guess, but an idiot is off limits. That's, that's going too far. Back then, my call sign was WA0OKV, Whiskey Alpha Zero, Oscar Kilo Victor, and of course, I put a slant and then a mobile zero, M0 on CW, I guess. Or, uh, yeah, I guess M0. Just to be formal about it. And to take forever to send, even at 45 words a minute. I oh, shut up, Stanley. You've, you've yammered enough into this old low-resolution camera, which everyone so adores. <laughs> well, it doesn't show the zits and basal cell carcinomas and other imperfections of my face, but I'll bet it would show the one in my foot on which is going to, surgery is going to be performed this Wednesday in Rapid City on that foot. And they're gonna have me using a walker, just like a real old timer to keep the weight off of it. Oh, happy, happy, joy, joy. Going up the stairs, sit on one stair, take the weight off that left foot, scooch up one stair with my butt on the next step, then my butt on the next step, just like I learned ham radio. I just put my butt on each step, got higher and higher, never did CW with my feet, although it may have sounded like it in the early days, and finally got to the top, from which, of course, I fell. To my no, no, shut, shut up, shut up, Stanley. Seventy three and so long, which on that mobile CW station, of course, translated into so long, did da da da. -di 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 -di.